Your legs can make or break your physique. But why do people neglect them? And why is it so hard to build a good pair of legs? Here's a beginner's guide to leg day and how to build a good set of legs. When you train legs, there are four different muscle groups that you work. The glutes, the quads, the hamstrings, and the calves. When you look at your legs, you have to know that your legs and arms are actually pretty similar. Your quad is like that of the tricep. It's responsible for the straightening of the leg. And the same thing goes for the hamstring, which is responsible for bending your leg. So we can consider in this example that the hamstring is like the bicep of the leg. If you look at the anatomy of the muscle, you can actually see why it's called a hamstring. And now onto the juicy dump. I mean glutes. The glutes are some of the strongest muscles in the body and responsible for a lot of stability in your exercises. And last up, we have those pesky little f***s, the calves. These can be compared to the forearm and are responsible for some of the movement in your foot. So let's get into the main idea of the workout. And how do we start most of our workouts? By warming up. As most of us know, warming up can help prevent injury. But what a lot of beginners don't know is that it's a mental and physical preparation for a good workout ahead. I like to split my warm up into three parts, cardio, dynamic stretching and weights. What a lot of guys do is get on a bicycle and cycle for around five to 10 minutes. This doesn't only allow for blood flow, but also preparation of the nervous system. Really hammering your legs can put a lot of strain on your nervous system. And a quick cycle before takes most of that stress away. Start out at a moderate pace for about five to 10 minutes. And if you feel you need to, up the intensity for the last minute. Next up in the warm-up routine, stretching. This can be a bit of a controversial one. Some studies show a decrease in strength due to static stretching before workout. Whilst others argue that the effects are so minor as not even worth acknowledging. I've done both over the years, and personally, I find that dynamic stretching works better for my workouts. Dynamic or active stretching is movement-based stretching. We often see runners and sportsmen doing this. And I know most of us in PE class doing in a circle, bringing our legs around. That is dynamic stretching. While static stretching is holding a stretch in a fixed position, which I'll be doing a full video on in the future. Just after my bicycle, I'll do five to 10 minutes of dynamic stretching before my workout. So instead of challenging your mate, rather do some dynamic stretches whilst you wait for your pre-workout to kick in and then move on to your workout. Now for the weights. Generally, what I suggest is doing three to four sets of compound movements. In our case, we will use a squat. Use a comfortable weight and aim for around 15 to 20 reps. Throughout your warm-up process, you have to gauge how you feel. Whilst this warm-up routine may seem a little bit extreme, I found that spending those 10 to 15 minutes before training really improved my leg days. It's a bit of a personal process, but you have to feel warm. Hold up, I need to show you guys something. This video is sponsored by Young LA. These are some of the best, highest quality threads I've come across. I don't personally partner with any brands that I don't believe in. If you look at the attention to detail and the quality of these garments, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you do decide to purchase any of these items, code NOL will save you 15% off. I do get commission off these sales, but it does support my content and my channel. These vests and swim shorts are dropping 10th June. So there are other products on the site, so be sure to check it out. Time for the workout. For beginner leg days, I generally recommend structuring your workout into four parts. First up, intense compound movements, such as squat or lunges. And then moving on to less intense compound movements, such as the leg press, hack squat, or any supported compound movements. And then we move on to isolated movements, such as the leg extension, hamstring curl, or quad contraction. And lastly, calves. So since you're already warmed up on the squat, dive into the set. You're just starting out. Never sacrifice form over weight. You don't have to go out and buy a fancy pair of squat shoes. Getting flat shoes that have some ankle support really also help too. Another thing other guys do is go all out with no shoes. But bros, please make sure your feet don't smell. Some guys go for six sets, whilst others aim for four. In my opinion, this really does depend on your goals. But a good starting point is around three to four sets with 10 to 12 reps. Ass to the grass. I'm sure you've heard that term before, but I recommend at the lower point of the movement, try and keep your legs perpendicular to the floor. As a bodybuilder, it's good to keep the tension applied to your muscles for as long as possible. Throughout your sets, going too low can take the tension off of your muscle. As when your ass touches the floor, you might find yourself in a rested position. Now we have lunges. I choose walking lunges because of the concept we just talked about earlier. And that is keeping the tension applied to the muscle. Having said, static lunges are a good tool in your arsenal. 
I just find they take a bit long and might be intimidating for beginners. Starting out, I recommend using no weights at first. And gradually add weight as you get more stable doing the movement. What I like to do is superset my squat with some walking lunges. However, it can be intense, so gradually work your way up. And it isn't for everyone, but give it a try. Now that those are out the way, let's move on to less intensive, supported compound movements. There are so many kinds of different leg presses. At the end of the day, it comes down to personal preference. I generally like recommending leg press to beginners because it's a very comfortable and supported leg exercise when doing this exercise and you want to work more hamstring and glute push with the heel of your foot and on the contrast if you want to work more of your quads push with the ball of your foot foot placement on the pad is also very important because the angle of your feet can change to where the tension is applied at this point of the workout i generally like to throw in some more high volume so go for around 15 to 20 reps if you want to maybe throw in a drop set no matter what your sexual preference you cannot deny the need for a big juicy dumpy so we have this really suggestive exercise known as the hip thruster i'm sure you've seen some girls on instagram doing this with a barbell but for a beginner, I generally recommend an easier way and that is doing it on the hamstring curl. As mentioned before, when you're in the exercise, try a drive with your heel. This will help apply more tension to the glutes. Another thing you can try is pause and hold on the contraction. And whilst you may feel uncomfortable doing this exercise, I often recommend it because it will benefit your squat. Now we have isolated movements. Since we just hit a hip thruster, now we're going to do some hamstring curl. Because the hip thruster does also work your hamstring. You can choose a lying or seated hamstring curl. So as a beginner, you should try each one to see and feel how your hamstring contracts. A lot of guys struggle with making the mind-muscle connection with their hamstring. What I like to suggest is a pause on contraction with a nice slow negative. Taking it slower really does help you find that contraction. Another thing that I really like is you do five of those pause and contractions followed by 10 or 15 pump out reps. Now we're on to the leg tricep. We're going to use a leg extension. Very similar to what we mentioned for the leg press, the angle and position of your feet can change where the tension is applied. If you also struggle with the connection and feeling in your legs you can do the same as with the hamstring curl and that is a pause on contraction with a slow negative on that contraction bring your toes all the way up even if you need to lighten the weight the contraction is what matters gyms may have around three to four different types of leg extension equipment as such as i preach on my channel your journey is very personal play around on each machine and see which gives you the best contraction last and least calves i've done a few videos surrounding calves a lot of people struggle with them and often the same people leave calves to the end of the workout and i say it doesn't matter when you do them as long as you do them i know how it is you push really hard in your leg session and now you have to go and do calves. Very easy for you to not give it your all. But generally, what I do throughout my workout, I superset them in. For exercises, standing calf raise. It's a pretty simple, straightforward exercise, but be conscious of doing the full range of motion. I see way too many people prioritizing weight over the full range of motion. And if you do struggle with that, try and pause on the stretch as well as the contraction and lower the weight. So now that your workout is done, your legs may feel a little bit tender. And if you feel like my legs are gonna be really sore tomorrow, Maybe spend another five minutes on the bike. This is not mandatory, but I do often recommend it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing because I have a lot more content coming your way.